Hello everyone, here is a video on how to replace or upgrade the hard disk on this Asus laptop which is model number X555L and uh, I guess long model number would be X555LA-DM1672T Tango uh, manufactured towards the end or mid or end of 2015 before we start, note that on my one I am missing at least two screws already so they've either fallen out through use or somebody's repaired this laptop and uh, lost the screws. So I'm going to clone it to an SSD here, just a crucial uh, 240 gig SSD. I've already cloned it using a USB to serial ATA lead. which looks like that. This one's a StarTech branded one, uh, USB 3 on one end, you plug into the computer, and serial ATA on the other end, which you plug into the drive. There's then many cloning softwares, uh, one of which, which is free for home use, is Macrium Reflect, uh, which I'd recommend is very easy to use, and uh, clones the drive. When it comes to booting off of the drive which you've cloned to, if you get an error message or a boot failure when you go to boot, I'd recommend creating a rescue disk using the Macrium software on another computer, uh, creating a USB stick, booting off that USB stick. In there is an option to repair the boot uh, or boot problems and that often fixes your startup issue if you've cloned your drive. Otherwise you could put this in and then install Windows from scratch and copy over stuff uh, from your old hard disk using the USB to serial ATA lead. So I'm going to undo, normally you'd undo these two screws as well but they're missing on mine so make sure you undo those. Undo the remaining screws and if you've seen any of my other videos you'll know that I like keeping the screws in the order they came out. So uh, making a little map over here of the screws just in case as some laptops are, uh, they have different length screws because you can cause damage to some laptops if you put a screw which is too long into the location where a short screw should be. Uh, definitely not done up very tight so I think the ones which are missing over here have just uh, worked themselves loose so badly installed in the factory quite likely so I think that's all of the screws that I can see there is one for this probably the RAM door but I don't think that will need undoing to take the cover off nope that is literally just a plastic door to where the RAM is doesn't need to be undone to take the case off. So with all the screws undone on the underside here, now going to open up the laptop. And probably for your benefit, so you can see, put it on its side. And using a spudger, or a plectrum or I like this tool I absolutely love it I've got several of them because they're so convenient or I find them uh, easy to use they are an RGM 102 often sold on uh, Amazon and recommended by Lewis Rossman of the Apple Mac repair fame So I've started opening up this right hand side of the laptop. And I'm just going along, putting the blade in and then uh, hinging it away from me. And that's undoing the clips which are along the front here. I 
Okay, that is most of that undone. Now, put the laptop down flat. I'm going to open up the laptop as much as I can and uh, try and unclip as much of the back part as possible as well. This bit I can do with my fingers. There we go. So now we don't want to lift this up just straight away because there'll be a load of ribbon cables, one going to the touchpad, one going to the keyboard, probably one going off to the power button. Um, so I'm going to see whether I can do this with you being able to, uh, to see what's going on. So there we go. We've got two ribbon cables to undo and actually you can get these out quite far. Um, some laptops don't give you much space at all. So I'm going to undo this one, and hopefully uh, manage to get it within camera shot. So let me see if I can make that brighter as well. Here is a black connector with a white hinge. I'm going to put my nail under that and hinge it upwards. There you go, so that's gone from being flat to being upwards there, and we should just gently be able to remove that touchpad cable. And then the reverse or inverse of that on the keyboard connector, it's a white connector with a black hinge. So get my fingernail underneath the hinge, hinge it upwards towards me, and that cable now just comes undone. And there is your keyboard and palm rest. Just have a quick look at this. If you wanted to replace the keyboard, it's heat staked in, so you'd have to melt all of these and then put your new keyboard in. Um, and then yeah, that's heat staked all along here. A, a nightmare. Basically, if you manage to break the keyboard on one of these, you're probably best off buying an entire replacement top palm rest rather than attempting to remove this keyboard uh, to repair it. Onto the laptop then, we have the hard disk is here, CD drive is here, aerial cables for the Wi-Fi will be these ones going along here, uh, what looks like probably soldered on RAM there, battery, non-user replaceable unless you take, out, uh, take apart the computer like I have, um, power connector is soldered onto the board, so if you damage that you'll need to... Um, Resolder the connector on there on the board. Video connector, cooling fan, and uh, speakers are up the front here. And then you have a flying board for your USB over here. So what I'm going to do is we can't take the hard disk out because this connector is over it. So again, a bit like the these two connectors here, you need to hinge up the um, bit of plastic, and then this should just come unplugged. It's double-sided taped onto the hard disk. I'm going to gently move that away from it, hold it down over there, out of the way. Two screws, I think, just the two screws which hold the hard disk bracket in. So I'm going to undo those. There's one. There's the other. Undo those screws. Now there's a bracket which goes underneath this circuit board so we actually do need to remove this circuit board as well. So there's one screw just below the hard disk and then this board will lift out. Now I need to slide the hard disk away from the connector over here and then we can lift the hard disk out. So that's the hard disk in its little caddy or bracket. What we now need to do is put this SSD in its place. So 
So there's four screws on the edge. Undo those. And now that hard disk should just uh, be removable or dropped, drop outable or slide outable from the uh, caddy. Well, it looks like there might be some double sided tape involved again on the underside here. Maybe this is slightly stuck to the metal bracket. Aha, there we go. So yeah, this uh, stuff which is I guess supposed to stop metal touching the um, the board on the drive was stuck to the edge of this metal bracket. Get the SSD, drop it into place, and then uh, do the four screws up again. So that's the SSD now attached to the bracket. Now I need to put it back where it was and attach it to the SS, uh, serial ATA connector. So I'm going to drop that into place and make sure the connector lines up and firmly push it back into place. So we need to put these screws back and this uh, board back. Now sitting flush where it should do and that single screw has got a little arrow pointing to where you need to put the screw that goes back there very unusual setup that this uh, metal bracket here with the uh, going underneath the circuit board anyway the uh, Two screws for the other side of the hard disk. Don't forget to plug this ribbon lead back in, otherwise your card reader, uh, audio and USB over there won't work. So make sure that that little hinge is open. line up and push in the connector and then hinge that hinge back down. Putting the keyboard and palm rest back on. Once again I'll try and do my best to make this visible. Um, not always easy to do when you're filming and you have to hold this in an awkward position. So that's now definitely securely slid into the connector here. Uh, it's difficult to describe what to look for, but um, there's a line uh, that is on this blue ribbon bit. You should feel that it kind of decisively hits the back of this connector and that line will be flush and straight against where you hinge down that little bit of plastic. So that's now in place. The final one, which is the touchpad connector, over to this connector here. That's definitely in and hitting the end of the connector and then push down on that little white hinge. We should now be able to put the machine back down and all the way around.
especially on the edges, you need to go round and make sure it's clipped down. So all the way round. All the way along the back. Whoops, I seem to have managed to turn the machine on. However, this will be a good test of whether the SSD works. And it's certainly booting and hasn't errored yet and looks like it's going to go into Windows. Perfect, so that works. Now it's time to screw the rest of the machine together. There we have it. Normally there'd be two more screws for here, but that machine was already missing them and I don't have any of the same uh, size and length. Turn it on once more just to check. And there we go. That's how you upgrade the SSD in this Asus Laptop model number X555L. If this video has been helpful to you, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much.